In this example, we're going to find the partial derivatives for this uh, multivariable function that you see here. So we're going to, in particular, we're going to find the partial of z with respect to x and the partial of z with respect to y. Okay. So, so in this example, we're going to, we're not going to use the limit definition. We're going to use a relatively uh, easier uh, method. Okay. So for finding the partial of z with respect to x. Okay, so we're going to treat y, okay, we're going to treat y as a constant, okay. So partial z with respect to x, treat y as a constant. And then when we take the partial of z with respect to y, we're going to treat x as a constant. Okay, so let's proceed with this. Okay, so finding the partial of z with respect to x. So this is... Okay, so this is going to be, uh, we can split this up. Okay, 4x squared, y cubed, plus the partial of y to the fourth respect to z. Okay, so all I did is just, we can take the, we can take the partial of each, of each term. Okay, so since, right, since, uh, since we're, this is, there's no y in here, okay, so we can just go ahead and apply, uh, just take the derivative of this with respect to x, okay, so we end up getting, uh, using the power rule, we get 4x, okay, in this case, all right, we have, uh, we have a y cubed here, so we're going to treat y cubed as a constant. Okay, so we're going to treat this as a constant. Okay, and then take the derivative of minus 4x squared with respect to x. So that's going to give us minus 8x. Okay, so that's bringing down the 2 and then multiplying by y cubed. Okay, again, y cubed is being treated as a constant. Okay, over here we don't have an x. And we don't have a variable x in here, so this is just a constant. So we're taking the derivative. We're taking the derivative with respect to x, not z. Sorry. Okay. So there's no there's no x in here. So this is just going to be zero then. Okay. All right. So now we get. Uh, so we have our solution. It's going to be four x minus eight x y cubed. Okay. So this is the result that we got in the first example using the limit definition. So you can see it's uh, it's relatively easier uh, using this approach. So let's use this. Uh, let's apply the same idea uh, for finding the partial of z respect to y. Okay, so we're going to have the partial of two x squared with respect to y minus the partial of, let's see, I went ahead and I, I took out the minus here, so that's fine. Remember, it's the same uh, with the partials, you can take out constants. So I'm treating minus as one, I'm just think of this as minus one. So taking the partial of 4x squared times y cubed with respect to y, and then taking the partial of y to the fourth with respect to y. Okay, so again, here we have, um, there's no y in here. So this is taking the partial of this. So taking the partial of this with respect to y is just going to give us zero. Okay. Over here, okay, we have y cubed and 4x squared. So 4x squared is going to be treated as a constant. So that's going to give us 4x squared. Use the power rule on y cubed, so we get 3 times y squared, 
Okay. And then taking the derivative of this with respect to y, it's just going to be 4y cubed using the power rule. So we end up getting uh, 4x squared times y squared times 3 plus 4y cubed. And over here, we can multiply the 4 and 3. That's going to give us 12x squared times y squared plus 4y cubed. And... I have a minus here, okay, so I'm just gonna put that back in, okay? So therefore, okay, right, we found a result. So we found the partial of z respect to x, okay, and then the partial of z respect to y. So notice one thing is that uh, the partials are, are uh, giving us different uh, values, okay? different function values okay so I'm going to do uh, some more examples of these